Hey everybody, SEC Analyze is finally back and in this episode I will be taking a look at JT Daniels and his season debut against Mississippi State. So we're going to dive into the film. First off, I want to apologize for the bad quality and second off, I want to apologize for being the kind of guy who looks at a performance like JT Daniels had and will still point out all of the flaws that he had. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about this play and what I think JT Daniels actually did wrong. So, at the very beginning of the play, you can't really tell whether it's man or zone coverage based off of how the players are playing the receivers. But when tight end Trey McKitty moves in and the cornerback just shifts, JT Daniels should have recognized that it was a zone coverage. When he took the ball back, he stared down Kiaris Jackson and nearly threw it into an interception. When this happened... Most fans probably didn't know why he did this. This is JT Daniels' first mistake as a Georgia Bulldog, and fans were kind of shaken by this since it was his first offensive drive of the game. Basically, what this tells you is that JT Daniels could not, could not tell that it was his own coverage pre-snap, and that almost cost him six points if it was a pick six. Personally, I love diagnosing route combinations, especially in the red zone. And in this play, moving from left to right, you'll see a fade at the top of the screen, followed by a corner, an inside whip route, and an out route by George Pickens. JT Daniels will be rolling out to his right and hitting George Pickens on the out route. Really, this play is just highlighted by JT Daniels, not only his throwing on the run, but his accuracy and his anticipation of George Pickens on the route. If you rewatch the play, George Pickens really doesn't even see the ball until it's already there. And that is just great chemistry by a quarterback wide receiver duo that has not played in a single game yet. With just over a minute left to go in the first half, JT Daniels throws what could arguably be his best ball of the day at Jermaine Burton down the sideline. If you look at the defense's play, they're playing a cover three with three high safeties pre-snap which makes the throw he makes even more impressive. For anyone who knows anything about the cover three, the outside, basically the route Jermaine Burton ran should not be open, hypothetically, but JT Daniels throws it with such accuracy and touch to the sideline that he's able to sneak in and get a big gain right before the half. This is probably my favorite throw of the day. On a third and 10, JT Daniels drops back and throws a back shoulder fade to J Demetrius Robertson, not to ice the game, but this definitely changed the tone of the fourth quarter. You see this, Demetrius Robertson does a good job of beating the cornerback, but if, if JT Daniels tries to lead him on that route, he has probably no chance of catching that ball, especially for Georgia fans who know about Demetrius Robertson. JT Daniels places this ball perfectly. It's my favorite throw of the game from him. Frankly, this is a throw that Stetson Bennett, Juwan Mathis just can't make. I would feel terrible if I went this entire video without talking about how well Will Rogers played. Everything I heard after the game was, did you see how bad the Georgia defense was, or Georgia defense is now trash without, the, without their two players. Will Rogers had an incredible game. You see some of the throws that he makes, it's stuff that Georgia played well against. There are going to be two Will Rogers plays that I'm going to highlight in this video. And one of them is with about six minutes left in the second quarter on a third and seven, right in, right outside of the Georgia red zone. Georgia does a great job of disguising man coverage on this play. Pre-snap, I frankly thought that it was his own coverage. But you see Will Rogers looking downfield. He has nothing open. Pocket doesn't collapse on him, but he feels pressure. and He rolls out to his right. Then on his run against a great Georgia defense, he makes a perfect throw to the sideline that is reviewed and ruled a catch. The play after this, Mississippi State would run it in for a touchdown, and those are four points that you're going to need against a team like Georgia. Although they didn't win the game, if they didn't get those four points, this game could have looked very different from the way it did at the very end. This is probably his best throw of the game, and one that you rarely see against a team like Georgia. Georgia once again does a good job of disguising man coverage, but on this play it really won't help them. Mark Webb, who's a senior cornerback, I've always had my problems with him. I've never liked slow corners, and he is one of the slowest corners I've seen in the SEC. Frankly, I think he could play linebacker, but that's beside the point. See on this route, he just gets toasted by the wide receiver who runs it up the sideline. 
And as good as the catch and run was, look at the throw by him. Perfect placement, perfect touch, and he puts it in a spot where he can turn and run with the ball. He has every right to be celebrating with the sideline after that throw against the Georgia defense. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the content. Uh, I'm currently trying to get uh, sponsorships for the channel, so I'll let you know what happens with that. If there's any uh, video analysis on a player or game or team that you would like, please comment down below, and I'll do that as soon as I can. Thank you.